Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vector It's 2022 video. Now if you've seen my original videos already, you'll notice that we've already covered a couple of cool things like the Twinmotion Direct Link, one of my favourite features, made a good video on that already. And um, we've also covered a few of the other cool features like the new per face mapping, and that's one of my favourite features of 2022 for sure, for 3D. So let me know in the comments how you're getting on. Um, I've also done uh, some M1 Mac testing and I made a specific video about this and twin motion and finally we also covered the redshift render mode just touched on that in our first video so and today we're going to be looking at some of the new interface changes now I'm in dark mode at the moment as you can see and basically the interface looks pretty similar I just want to run through a couple of the subtle uh, but nice improvements and changes that you're going to find under the bonnet as it were so the very first thing you're going to notice is the snapping palette, which used to be a floating palette, and there was never quite the right place for it to dock, particularly on Windows, it never docked very well. So here we go, the snapping palette is now docked down in this bottom right corner permanently. I really like this, now I've got used to it, it's really nice. Um, and a couple of really cool things is you can basically double click onto the icon and that will pop up. Um, don't forget on most projects, you really want your um, reference grid to be something like uh, a thousand and your snap grid to be something like one okay uh, whether you show the grid or not is up to you uh, but do remember you can also basically click the grid on and off from this top area let's just put it into dark mode so you can see that's cool uh, let's just click the grid on and off um, so yeah you only put the grid on if you actually want to snap to it um, then the next icon uh, you'll notice is going to be snap to objects so if you click you'll get the settings on there click and hold they'll pop up no real need to change any of these snap settings I never really turn them off ever um, to be honest if I do want to turn them off remember the old key for suspending snapping um, now the key for that is actually going to be displayed here on the Mac it's the kind of squiggle key between shift and Z I call it um, so if I hold that key it's really nice now you get a little message suspended snapping but what you can also do is permanently suspend snapping uh, so let's turn the grid off there. You'll see that here I've got some objects just being drawn and there's no snapping at all. Okay, so that's cool. When you're picking things up, you just have zero snapping. And let's turn it back on to get our snaps back. As I say, you can temporarily invoke it with the squiggle key uh, just to suspend snapping there. Okay, great. So this is all nice. Um, the final little setting in here is just to click onto the cog. And again, this will reveal whether you think, do things like show snap points, uh, zoom line thickness, and so on. This is always how I like to have my cursors here. And for those who really like to fiddle, you can go into interactive settings. Um, and believe it or not, you can actually change pretty much all the colors. But I actually quite like the colors. I think they've done a good job at choosing some sensible and standard colors. So I'm not a huge fan of changing all of these. Um, occasionally I change the back background in 3D mode. That's the only one I will change if I'm doing some renderings and I don't like the green greeny background. Okay, great. So the next place you're going to notice some nice new interface changes is the attributes palette. Um, so this has been tidied up quite a bit and there's some nice new features. Um, gone are the settings at the bottom. Those are these little kind of clicks here where you can kind of set by uh, class and so on. Okay, so that's cool. But basically, let's have a quick look at how this works. So let's click onto our shape here. Um, if we click onto color, uh, we've still got the same basic dialogue we had before, where we can kind of click into the settings and, for example, load in uh, Farron Ball colors or RAL colors, for example. Don't forget that's a really fantastic feature of Vectorworks. Got these amazing paint colors. It looks to me like there might be a few new palettes in there as well, but it's just in a fantastic set of colors, basically, for color handling. And don't forget, you can also make your own custom color palettes for your own individual company. A great tip. Okay, so we're just going to choose a couple of more colors here, just because I want to show a little effect. Uh, let's just choose one more there. That's cool. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the opacity function. Um, now, you used to have to click into a dialog and go out of a dialog in order to preview it. This is just really nice now. You can basically just kind of click, drag, and um, as soon as you release the mouse, it just immediately previews. So you can see the percentage there. You can actually type in as well, which is really nice. So this makes it super quick and easy just to kind of quickly set the opacities 
um, either by numbers or just by dragging around. And I think that's going to reduce the amount of clicks. As I say, because you used to have to go into a dialogue and out of a dialogue, if you know what I mean. So that's really, really nice. Now, this little kind of like um, workflow, if you like, has been followed through. So this obviously works for the pen as well, which is cool. And if you do click on these little dots here, you can actually link the pen to opacity. So that's really nice. So whatever you do for your um, sort of fill, as it were, is linked now, you can see. Let's just click and unlink that so I could keep them separate if I wanted. And then finally, um, we've got the drop shadow function. So let's just click here on a shape here, just nothing at all. Just click shadow and just to show you how the shadow works. So here we go. We've got this same effect here, which is really nice. We can type in numbers. Uh, let's just blur it by, say, three or two or something. Change the angle just kind of get like really nice sort of subtle effects on things like the drop shadows. So it works extremely well. Um, when we go to things like uh, hatching, what you're going to notice is you still get the name of the hatch, which is better because it was a bit small before. Um, and when you click, I do notice that it seems a lot more responsive in terms of loading in the hatches. Um, so this is fantastic. Now, of course, we can click the attribute mapping tool or on my workspace, the shortcut for the A key to keep scaling and rotating these wonderful hatches. That's a really nice thing if you don't know how to do that. And do remember this, if you right click locate, that will immediately locate the hatch for you. So you can click edit and then go in and sort of start messing around with things like the colors and so on. Let's just kind of tweak this a little bit. Let's say we were doing a bit of tiling in the bathroom or something. Um, so that's really, really nice. We can change the background color and the fill. So that's cool. Um, you can do the things like the tiling and so on. You can click the attribute mapping key to scale. And don't forget, if you do want to save that, you can right click and create a new hatch from your mapped hatch so that when you do pop your resource browser open, you've now got that one to use again in the future. And notice how it preserves the transparency and preserves things like the drop shadow effect as well. So these are all really nice sort of 2D improvements on the graphics. Um, I was just going to flick on actually to a little page uh, because this is like um, a sort of nice interior sheet, a typical kind of interior sheet. One of my clients does this sort of thing. I just really want to show you how you can kind of like quickly make use of things like that drop shadow and sometimes things like the opacity function as well, just to kind of make drawings a bit more subtle. Um, so these are nice little sheets. All the graphics and things in here are just being loaded in. So that's definitely how you can use it on your design layers or your sheet layers to improve your 2D graphics. So this next view feature will revolutionize your workflow, which is a really excellent feature for controlling how you can really rapidly create classes. And this is a very nice sort of on-demand creation mode that you can use. So what we're going to do is basically select an object here. And you can see at the moment it's not in a class. And also, it's got no materials or textures. So what we're going to do is just pop open our resource browser. We're going to go and find uh, an appropriate texture. Let's go into the project here. I think probably we've got some decking or something. So I can just sort of drag and drop. Now, with the new perface mapping, remember, if I want to, I can hold down the Command key. And that's pretty nice. And I can just dra drag that onto that front face. Um, I'll just do that again on the other face as well. So for example, I could have a different material if I really wanted to. Just to show you, to demonstrate, drag some concrete onto there. Okay, brilliant. Now, what you can now do, uh, which is very cool, is you can select the object, you can right click, you'll notice a new pop up menu called uh, Create Class Using Object Attributes. So, when you do this, you can create a new class, for example, called Decking One. Let's go edit the properties of that class. And basically, you can see it's already got the hatching, the 2D hatching. And if I go to textures, um, it would actually have the texture in there as well if I'd only used the one texture. So that's probably something that we, you need to bear in mind. So we'll click OK. And you'll see now that has basically got uh, the class there. And here we go. We've got the different overrides. Now, if I did want to, I could revert that to by class. And you'll see that the decking will pop in there which is cool. Let me just sort of show you that again from, from scratch, how this works again. Um, so let's do this on something else. Let's go through to another object. In fact, look, I'll just use my eyedropper tool to pick up and drop and just match that object there. So here we go. We've got this sort of drive area here. Again, it's untextured, it's unclassed. So we'll do from scratch. We'll pop it open. 
Um, we'll scroll up to an appropriate texture, maybe some asphalt, and we'll just right click and apply. So that applies the texture to the entire object. Now what I would like to do is actually make a class for this. So I right click, um, here we go, create class using object attributes. And then you can immediately create a new class called uh, drive, for example, click OK. And what that will do is have all the properties of that class, the 2D graphics and so on. But you'll notice it's automatically received the texture um, from the object because it was a single texture this time. So the great thing about that is then, you know, if I'm doing a bit of more work on the future, let's say we want to extend that little road along here, perhaps click G just to kind of get the alignment there. Um, and then as soon as I extrude this shape, let's do minus 100. You'll notice again, it's not classed up. But as soon as we push it into the class, and one of my favorite ways of doing this is to use my filters. Okay, and then I like to do this, right click, assign to selection. So basically, I'll always do uh, apply the graphics of that class onto the object. So it's a very, very quick way to generate your classes. I just want to show you one more little element to this. So I'm going to swap out my material um, for a different kind of asphalt on that paving there, that drive. Now what you can do, which is really cool, um, you can right click, you can basically update the class attributes and you'll notice you get a nice little set of tap boxes here. Uh, you can obviously update any class, but it's already selected the drive class by default. You simply click OK, you know, and that will basically update all of the materials in the model that have that class. So this is fantastic. So it means that you didn't need to right click, edit, you know, go in here, fiddle around with the classes and so on as well. You can see it's already updated in there and then come back out of the dialogue. So much more on demand, much more sort of as you're designing. So yeah, really wonderful feature. Um, this is definitely gonna revolutionize my workflow and I hope it does yours too. Excellent, so I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, second video on 2022 new features. We've got lots more coming soon. So please subscribe if you're new around here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.